Good afternoon and welcome to Hash Nest. Um, I've done this video before but I'm going to do it again because there has been quite a few changes to the website. Um, first things first, let's log in. This is the first thing that has changed. There is now one account for everything in Bitmain. That is the Bitmain purchase website, Hash Nest and Antpool. I'm sorry if this runs a bit slowly, it's unfortunately my connection rather than anything else. Um, and it's also unfortunately the recording software I've had to use. Right, first thing you might notice, the instant purchase has gone. There used to be the option here, put the number of giga hash you want in, buy it. Now we have the trade tab. What we're going to do here, as soon as round one subscription is over, I apologise, um, I'll mention that to them later, that should say orders not odors. Um, down here we have the Umisu, which is the one we were showing before, and this is our trade window. It will tell you what people are currently trying to sell their Giga Hash at, and what people are currently trying to buy the Giga Hash at. As you can see, there's quite a few people selling, but even more people buying. You will have to apologize. I'll apologize for this now. But you'll have to ignore it. It does auto fill the amount for some reason for me. Right. So let's give a quick example buy. Uh, if we go down here, we want to fill this in. So I'm going to be cheeky here. I'm just going to fill in the actual amount that someone's selling for because we want to buy instantly. So okay. So yep, yeah, hit buy. It will ask you for your trade pin. This is not the um, password that you use to log in. This is the same password that you usually use for the withdrawals. So if we hit that. There we go, and it should have gone through. Right, what we can do, nope, we don't want to save the password because it's not actually a password, thank you very much. Right, that's to buy, this tab's to sell if you want to sell in the future, and this tab's our trade history. Right, so let's have a look down here, shall we? Yeah, you can see that I've bought 2 giga hash, which will probably tell you this is the second run through of this video. Unfortunately, the first one made a 12 gigabyte file, so let's hope it's less this time. Yep, you can also look down the other miners. Again, these two are Bitcoin. This one is Script Miner, which is your Litecoin and your Doge. And we have the Finance tab. This is pretty much the same as your wallet with a few differences. Right. Here we have the Bitcoin available, locked, and total. Same with Litecoin and Doge. With them now, if you want to insert any money into these accounts, hit the Deposit button. And it will bring up not only the address for that Bitcoin, which you can copy and paste, but also your QR code, which your phone or other item will be able to scan. You can also get a list of your hash up here. Yep, here we go, 116 hash now. I know it's not a huge amount, but I use it for buying games on Humble Bundle, so the little bit it makes me... Well, it'd be nice to have a bit more, let's say that, but the little bit it makes me, I usually turn into games, to be fair. Transactions. This one will tell you what trades you've made, what purchases you've made. You can download it, you can sort it by the different currencies and miners, and you can also sort it by different types. Now, trades, deposit, withdrawals, minings, and fees. Settings. Some of these are related to APIs, which I haven't really looked into. So what we're going to do, I'm going to set this. I want to buy 10% of my mining power back at the price that we've pretty much just paid. Well, I'm going to go a little less because hopefully I'll get a few cheap ones. And that will remember that we have now... Oh, I forgot to change the hash type. I'm sorry. I'll sort that out later. It's um, my computer's resolution means I can't see the price that I'm putting in, which doesn't help. So what we're going to do is I'll leave that for a minute. I'll set that up later. We're going to move on to our status. This used to be called miner status. It tells you what your workers are currently working at. That's the mining farm, your other Bitcoin miners, and your Litecoin miners, and what earning per giga hash you're seeing. As you can see, this is going steadily down. It will do this because of the changes in the Bitcoin difficulty rate. It is nothing to be worried about. I'll move on to Antpool in a minute because that's one of the new ones that I want to show you. 
talk is the talk forums. This it did used to just be called forums, and now it's called talk. The one thing I will say about this: there's several different nodes. Ant miner for physical miners, hash nest, yep, and ant pool. Right. If we look down back here, what I am going to say is we used to have one tab up here that was your support center. That has moved. If you need support, it is now down at the bottom of the page under services. You have your support center, your frequently asked questions, and your tickets. Right. This tab will allow you access to the other sites. So, for example, that one will take you to the Bitmain Tech in which you can purchase physical miners. Um, I haven't worried about this too much, you know, they cost a fair bit and I haven't got that much to put into Bitcoin at the minute unfortunately. They are worth it if you can put it in, because not only will you make whatever you're hashing minus your electric costs, when the time comes that you're feeling that maybe it's not providing as much return on your investment as you would hope, you can then sell that miner and get quite a bit of your initial investment back. Um, so it is always worth getting into the physical miners. I actually have an ant miner U1 hanging around somewhere and it has been a long time since I've uh, unplugged it. It has been working pretty constantly for me. It's always good. Right, ant pool. The ant pool is where you can put your physical miners to mine into hash nest. It also has automatic withdrawals for your um, miners and things like that. Right. Obviously my speed is zero, a U1 miner is not pointed out this pool because it doesn't do enough work to really be worth running anymore. I just keep it running because it's roughly making what the computer is costing me an electric to run, which means I'm running my computer at discounted electric. Dashboard gives you your overall rate, what your hash rate has been for overall through the day, for the last hour, for the last 30 minutes and the last 10 minutes. It will also give you your 24 hour earnings and what has been paid out and what is currently in your account waiting to be paid out. Your worker, it will ask you the first time you log into this to make a name. Um, you just put your username in, so I just put prisoner206 in. It Either dot one or underscore one will work for a worker. As you can see, I've tested both of those. And we go into the account. You can see payment history settings API. I've never really tried an API. It's something I'll, I would like to look into writing, but I'm not going to worry about. Again, you can set your automatic payouts up here. What Bitcoin wallet you want those payments to go to. What time zone you're running. And your user ID. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this back to Hashnest. And we're going to have a look, quick look at setting up a miner for that. I don't have any of the amp miners at the minute. I mean, I've looked at them, but they're not something I can justify spending money on at the minute, uh, especially not coming up to Christmas with three kids. So what I've got to demonstrate is I've downloaded CG Miner. This is an older version, it's 3.72 because that is the last one to support script and I've been using it for Litecoin Miner. I've moved on to um, SG Miner for script now anyway. What you have here, once you've extracted the zip file, is all these files. You can't just double click CG Miner and run it'll crash out. Once it goes through that, it will just say, please enter your pool details and all that. You don't really want to do that every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a bat file. These first two lines set up your GPU ready for mining. cgminer.exe just means that we are using the cgminer.exe executable. Dash O, and then the, your pool name, colon, and the port number. So solo.ampool.com333. Dash U, prisoner two is username. Prisoner206 underscore or dot one. It doesn't make a real difference. Dash P is password. You don't have to put a password in, but they recommend using 123 or any other random password. And believe me, I've used some random ones. These ones, intensity, graphic levels, thread concurrency, are all because I don't have a brilliant graphics card. It's one of the old 6700 series. It's just about strong enough to show you this on. What you'll want to do save this but you need to change this to all files and this won't say bat on yours this is because I've already saved this yours will say .txt change that to .bat save it in the folder that your CG miner is in if you go down to here 
you can see that obviously I've got start two. Start is the Litecoin one, start two is the Bitcoin one. So if we run that now, it will set the GPO allocations up, value saved, it started CG miner, it's recognised all those, it's checking that the pool's still alive, it will warn you obviously if it goes down, it's checking your um, difficulty level, setting your network difficulty, and then it will go on, it will start setting up, telling you what your speed is for the last few seconds. Obviously you can see mine zero on here, that's just simply down to the uh, miners that I have running. Unfortunately, I haven't got them. But, I mean, that should be enough to show you a rough idea of how to set it up. The setup for your ant miner should be similar. And I think that's pretty much all we need to talk about with uh, the bit main ant mine, sorry, bit main ant pool and the ant miners today and hash nest. Again, always remember to log out. If you're smart, you've got your, you know, two factor authentication set up anyway. It's not going to matter too much if someone gets your account details. But you still don't want it happening, let's face it. Um, if you've enjoyed the video and you would like to donate, we have the donation icons up on screen now. Obviously, it has been mentioned that these are a lot easier as QR codes. And there's been another change to the last addresses. These are different addresses. Reason being, anything that goes to here now goes directly to my Hashnest account. Um, I, I don't think any of you will want to donate Giga Hashes, but if you ever do, Here's the email address to do it to. Um, please don't try and send too many stupid questions. I will be setting up a separate folder at some point for idiots that do ask too many staff questions. But if there's a question you honestly can't find the answer anywhere else, then feel free to obviously try and contact me on there. I'll try and see if I can either edit the video or upload a new one to help you out there. But again, I hope you've enjoyed it. 